The world has advanced in terms of science and technology. The world we live in today is shaped by the research we conduct, the discoveries we make, and the instruments and groundbreaking technology we employ to achieve these exploration and discoveries. Some of these discoveries have been in development for almost a half century on average, going back several decades. More research, experiments, and inventions have been made to advance the projects and improve them. Nuclear fusion is one of the tests that is being worked on. Nuclear fusion has been around for years, lasting 50 years on average. Scientists continue to study nuclear energy and look for ways to harness it in other fields. As time passed, scientists found new ways to build sophisticated machinery that allowed them to advance their understanding of nuclear fusion. They have now achieved a breakthrough. What major accomplishment did these researchers make? How does this operate? And how will this discovery progress their research? Nuclear fusion is the process by which two light atomic nuclei combine to form a single heavier nucleus while emitting massive amounts of energy. The fusion reaction takes place in a state of matter known as plasma. Plasma is a hot charged gas made of positive ions and free moving electrons with unique properties from liquids, solids, and gases. This reaction powers the sun and all other stars combined and diffuses this into our sun. The nuclei would have to collide at the rate of 10 million degrees Celsius at incredibly high temperatures. This temperature's impact gives them enough energy to overcome their mutual electrical repulsion. When the nuclei are very close to each other, the attractive nuclear force between them will outweigh the electrical repulsion, allowing them to fuse. To achieve this, the nuclei must be confined within a small space to boost their chances of collision. The increased pressure brought on by the sun's intense gravity creates the space necessary for nuclear fusion. But this raises the issue why exactly scientists are looking into fusion energy. Since the 1930s, when the theory of nuclear fusion was first proposed and understood, several scientists, physicists, and even engineers have been searching for ways to duplicate and further utilize it. Because if these scientists were successful in industrializing the energy here on Earth, it would result in an endless supply of safe, clean, and reasonably priced energy for the entire world. This is why they are working to recreate nuclear fusion here on Earth. The world is a better place for humanity to live as a result. Nuclear fusion can generate four times the energy per kilogram of fuel than fission which is used in nuclear power plants in nearly 4 million times more energy than burning coal or oil, which explains why scientists are so excited about this project. Most of the fusion reactor concepts under development will use a tritium deuterium mixture. These hydrogen atoms have extra neutrons. In theory, a few grams of these reactants can generate a terajoule of energy. The required amount of energy is roughly equivalent to what one person in a developed country requires more than 60 years. Fusion fuel is in abundance, and it's very accessible too. Tritium can be produced from the fusion from the fusion reaction generated from neutrons with naturally occurring lithium. Deuterium, on the other hand, isn't a scarce material as it can be extracted from vast loads of seawater. These fuel supplies are bound to last for millions of years. Future fusion reactors are minimal to completely hazard and involved and intrinsically safe. Do not anticipate it to produce long-lived or high-activity nuclear waste. Nuclear fusion is a challenging process to start and maintain over time. There is no chance of a meltdown or a runaway reaction. This is because fusion can only occur and function under specific circumstances, except for accidents or system failures. If a problem arises, the plasma will naturally end by losing almost all its energy and dissipating before the reactor is harmed. Nuclear fusion doesn't release any greenhouse gases into the atmosphere of the Earth, including CO2 is another significant feature of the process. This century is anticipated to be used from the second half onwards to become a regular source of low-carbon electricity over the long term. More than 50 countries are currently engaged in nuclear fusion research, and successful fusion reactions have resulted from the variety of tests that have been carried out. Despite the fact that it does not produce more energy than is required to initiate the reaction, different magnet-based devices and designs where the fusion takes place have been developed by researchers. 
There have been inventions like Dakamak and Stellarator and other techniques still call for linear devices, lasers, and sophisticated fuels. When it came to resource mobilization, we used to speculate about how long it would take to finish the fusion energy preparations and how quickly emerging fusion technologies would be tested, validated, and qualified by the market. The development of the nuclear infrastructure needed for fusion, including the standards and best practices needed, is another important issue that needs to be addressed if this new form of energy is to become a reality. However, a significant advancement was noted after many years of inertial confinement. On August 8, 2021, fusion research produced a result of more than 1.3 megajoules for the first time. Scientists at the National Ignition Facility, NIF, at Lawrence Livermore National Laboratories, LLNL, were propelled by this discovery, positioning them for the threshold diffusion gain and achieving scientific ignition. A paper with over 1,000 authors was published in physical review letters during the one-year anniversary of this enormous milestone. This is to honor and show gratitude to the people who worked tirelessly over the previous decades to achieve this milestone. The record shot was a major scientific advance in fusion research, which establishes that fusion ignition in the lab is possible at NIF, said Omar Hurricane. The chief scientist for LLNL's inertial confinement fusion program. Achieving the conditions needed for ignition has been a long-standing goal for all and special confinement fusion research and opens access to a new experimental regime where alpha particle self-heating outstrips all the cooling mechanisms in the fusion plasma. The paper's detailed accomplishments outcomes, including design improvements and new practical resources. According to Alex Zilstra, the lead experimentalist and first author of the experimental physical review e-paper at Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory, this will happen in 2020 or early 2021. The laboratory performed experiments in the burning plasma phase for the first time. These were the events that set the stage for the record shot. He said, several improvements were made to their design to get the shot made on August 8, 2021. He also added that, Improvements in the physics design and target quality were the factors that helped lead to the success of the August shot, which was discussed in the physical review e-papers. Annie Critcher, lead designer and first author of the design physical review e-paper at LLNL, also commented on the experiment. She noted that the experiment resulted in a few significant changes, including unimproved target design. She mentioned that the decision to shorten the coasting time with more efficient whole ROMs compared to previous experiments was a major factor in switching between the burning plasma and ignition regimes. The quality of the capsules was improved and the fuel tube was shrunk. The researchers have continued to conduct additional experiments since the experiment was completed in August last year to repeat the presentation and better understand the responsiveness under this new regime. Critcher continued, saying numerous factors can affect each experiment and that because the quality of the targets varies. The 192 laser beams do not perform exactly the same from shot to shot. On each target, the ice layer develops at a different roughness. These tests provided the window of time to comprehend the sensitivity of the experimental regime's variability. All subsequent experiments showed greater capsule gain than unity, although they did not all achieve the same level of fusion yield as the breakthrough experiment which was conducted in August 2021. These experiments produce yields ranging from 430 to 700 kilojoules, which are higher than 170 kilojoules from February 2021. The results of these experiments provided hints on the next steps to take and changes to make to achieve higher performance in the future. Scientists are using the same experimental data to understand the fundamental processes a fusion ignition better and to burn and improve simulation tools in support of stockpile stewardship. Moving forward, the research team intends to balance the data collected from all the experiments and simulations to prepare for a more robust regime beyond the ignition stage, where general trends in this environmental regime can be found and can be better separated from variability in targets and laser performance. Efforts are being made to improve fusion performance as the laser and target are improved. Modifications to the design are also being made in order to improve energy delivery 
to the hot spot while progressing or even going harder on the hot spot pressure. Among these steps are increasing the amount of fuel and compressing the fossil fuel. It is extremely exciting to have an existence proof of ignition in the lab, Hurricane said. We're operating on a regime that no researchers have access since the end of nuclear testing, and it's an incredible opportunity to expand our knowledge as we continue to make progress. More developments came from Europe, where European scientists announced a significant step forward in their mission to develop practical nuclear fusion. The JET laboratory in the United Kingdom set a new world record for the amount of energy extracted by combining two types of hydrogen. The experiment produced 11 megawatts of power in just 5 seconds. A double improvement from the tests taken in 1997. Dr. Joe Milnes, the reactor lab's head of operations, exclaimed with satisfaction that the JET experiment had brought them closer to fusion power and that they now had confidence that they could build a miniature star inside the device and hold it there for 5 seconds. That's enough to take us into a new realm, he said. That is our video for today. We hope you like it. Do you think we are close to fully utilizing the power of nuclear fusion? Share all of your thoughts with us in the comment section below. Well, that's all for now. This is Big Tech Media. See you again tomorrow. Keep in mind to like, share, and subscribe.